voltage. is what's flowing through the pipe. It's the push that's pushing through. The current is the actual flow that's traveling through that pipe. And imagine if you wrapped one of the zip ties around it and start zipping it down, tightening up. That's your resistance. So the more resistance you have, the last floor you're going to have. That's the easiest way of doing that. And going back to Ohm's law, how to calculate it is if you know any two of these, you can figure out the third. So generally speaking, if you have a power supply, you know how much voltage you have. So that's the easy one. And it's just working out the other two based on what you have. So if we look at a simple circuit, this way. See so we have a 12 volt battery with a switch. With a 25 ohm resistor. So we know E and we know R. So if we look at our formula, E equals I times R, I equals E divided by R. So to find the current, it's going to be voltage over resistance. 12 volts over 25 ohms. And that's going to be 0 decibel 4 8 amps, or depending on what you're looking at, 480 milliamps. And basically, we don't. We know there's a little bit of loss in that wire but it's negligible. doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things. Now if we had changes around, if we did know what resistance we had, but we knew we needed so many amps, we could just rearrange those terms and work it backwards from there. I'll keep uh, Ohm's Law up in the corner there for us. So we'll keep coming back to that. Now what I've shown you there is what's called a series circuit. Everything is basically in one single flow. And there's, generally speaking, in a series circuit, you can have as many things as you need. It could be a switch. <coughs> you have a bulb. You can have a resistor, you know, maybe another switch. As long as it's one after another after another, that's a simple series circuit. And they're the easiest to calculate because you're just basically working one uh, item after another in that in that flow. So if we're looking at a series circuit that had multiple resistors in it. So again, we'll go back to our 12 volt battery. With a 2 ohm resistor. That 4 ohm resistor. And 6 ohms. Basically, the total resistance in a series circuit is the sum of all the resistors added up. 
So in this case, would be the sum of resistor 1, resistor 2, resistor 3. So total resistance in this is 12 ohms. So again, if you look at Ohm's law, current in this voltage over resistance is 1 amp. So generally speaking, this is going to be the easiest circuit and you will have one of these on your exam. Then there, whether they give it to you where you just have to figure out the resistance to current one way or the other, you'll have something how they tweak it. So they might give you the circuit, you know, they're not going to give you the voltage, but they'll tell you it's a one amp circuit. Same idea. If you know, you know this, and you know this, figure out this. So, voltage is the unknown. But if we had uh, 12 ohms times 1 amp, it would be 12 volts. <coughs> so, that's just the cases they're going to give you one or the other. Any questions as far as your sure, circuit? Sure. They're pretty simple, straightforward. And the easiest thing is, no matter what it is, your total resistance is going to be a larger value. Where that gets a little bit different is when we start talking parallel circuits. So if you look up on there, they're basically a parallel circuit. is you don't have that single flow of power anymore. You could have a light bulb, a resistor, another resistor, and the flow would go on. And what happens with this is, whereas the series circuit went just a, a simple A to B, B to C, your flow is going through multiple channels at the same time. So, whereas total resistance in a series was just adding them all up, total resistance in a parallel, you're doing the inverse. So, um, in this example here, Four volt power supply. Um, Dave, could you use the black marker? Some people sure. saying they're having trouble seeing sure. it from back there. So if we have a 300 ohm, 100 ohm, and a 200 ohm. So in this case here, the power is going to come, the voltage is going to come through, and it's going to be split between those three. So our total resistance now is going to be, so the inverse is 1 over 300 plus 1 over 100 plus 1 over 200. Going back to high school math, common denominators. So if we go over 600, so it would be 2 over 600 plus 6 over 600 plus 3 over 600. 
11 over 600. Doing the inverse of that, resistance total would be 54.5 ohms. Clean that up a little bit. So this is where, if you have a calculator, make sure you bring one into your exam. Non-programmable, but one that has the inverse function. Because I'll make these a lot easier for you when it comes down to exam time. And with a parallel circuit, what makes it different too, kind of stands out, is your total resistance is always going to be less than your smallest resistor. So if you come up with a number, say 250, and you have 100, <coughs> you know, something got uh, shuffled in your calculations. So going back to Ohm's Law, if we want to find the current in this, we know that the voltage is 24, the resistance is 54.5 ohms. So now, work it out, you have 0.44 amps or 440 milliamps. Um, is, oh wait, never mind, okay, yep, yeah, yeah. sorry, I forgot to do something, now, now I get it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, questions about parallel circuits, basic. Basic setup of them again. They'll have multiple flows versus a single flow. So you want the ohm? You want to get it down to one number? We'll always get to one number because then once you have it in the one number, then and from that point it works in the equation. Exactly. So you have to have a single number for each one of those. Same idea as if you have multiple batteries. You want to combine them to make one voltage. Multiple resistors. You know, combine them to make one equivalent resistor. Sure. Yeah, that may sound like a stupid question, no. but uh, this only applies to like a single circuit or a single system, right? Like uh, single entity. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so like you, like if you had uh, two different power sources and connected to each other with circuits or whatever, you have to look at whether both power supplies yeah. are feeding one circuit because then it'd be the same as having two batteries serving something you could combine that but you have to look at how they're coming together okay i feel smarter now and then i guess just a simple question about yeah. resistors yeah now some resistors have a lower threshold is it possible to get back um like in that particular situation could the energy not go backwards or is that kind of It'd be beyond what we'd be oh. looking at. Um, the biggest, the big thing to worry about with your resistors is, uh, and we'll talk about it a little bit later, is um, wattage. Um, your typical little resistors here, the little hobby kits, they're a quarter watt. Yeah. You may up to a half watt. Uh, when you start getting to larger um, circuits, you'll be talking about five watt, ten watts, and that's where you want to make sure you have the right. Um, power to address it otherwise they'll just burn out as well it'd be similar to trying to power a house with you know normal um, circuit panel wiring yeah. fed from the pole it's going to overload it's going to it's not going to work out in the grand scheme of things on your exam you'll have one parallel you have one series in reality, most of what you're going to work on when you do get to the point where you want to take a stab at doing things, they're going to be combination circuits. Where it's not going to be nice lineal one after the other, and it's not going to be all parallel. 
know, I have a crazy one I've kind of thrown up there. I found this on a website where they, they showed an idea of a circuit. So you have a battery, a switch, a lamp, a variable resistor, another lamp, and another switch. So it kind of gets convoluted that, you know, here you have a basic parallel, but here you have another resistor that adds in series. It gets a little bit confusing. And you start looking at, okay, what's the seri series circuit? What's the parallel circuit? But if you scroll up a little bit on that, you can see, if you redraw it, it makes it a lot simpler. So you just kind of look at the flow from one to the other to the other. So we saw it come into the switch. From the switch, it branched into two different circuits. One was the lamp by itself. It fed the variable resistor. That split again and came back to the battery. So that would dim that lamp number two. Essentially, resistor would dim this variable resistor would dim these two. Yeah. Wouldn't. Wouldn't the first one. Would not do anything in the first one. This switch would kill power to everything. everything. This would dim these two. And this switch would kill that one. But wouldn't affect the second lamp or the first lamp. Right. So the first circuit diagram was kind of convoluted and kind of, you know, all over the place. <coughs> you now, what does which? And you start looking at where it goes. Simplest thing is just redraw it and just look at that flow step by step. You're not making a series circuit of it, but you're making a very linear <coughs> progression through the circuit. Good news is, I'm not going to be on your exam. You'll have nothing that complicated. If you do have something you, you are working on, you're going to be combining series and parallel circuits. First thing you do is take your parallel circuits and make it a single circuit and then you can make it a series calculation after that point. So in this case here, we have the battery, we have the one resistor, split into two resistors, coming back. So would that mean a lamp is a resistor? Essentially. Any, yeah. Anything that's drawing power? Is everything, if, everything is a resistor one way. What they've done is certain resistors are more useful than others. Um, your light bulbs, basically they're a resistor that gives off light. Um, when you set up um, your first HF set station, you put a dummy load. That lets you test your equipment without broadcasting. That's another useful resistor. So basically you're dumping all the power from your radio into that resistor without dumping into the airwaves. Your antenna on your radio is basically another useful resistor. So 12 volt battery, two ohm resistor, six ohm, four ohms. So like I said, figure out the equivalent of this. So we'll call this resistor one, resistor two, resistor three. So one over our total for resistor one and two. One over six. Plus one over four. The lowest common denominator of those two, 12. Two over six plus three. Two over 12 plus three over 12. Was 5 over 12. Doing the inverse of that is 2.4 ohms. So the equivalent of this is 2.4 ohms. Now we can do this as a series circuit, adding R1 plus. So in that case, you've eliminated that one piece of the diagram. Exactly. I have just gave this, basically as if I went to a box of resistors, I went, okay, instead of having two resistors here, That's I'm going to put one equal resistor in its place. So other than not having one resistor on you at the time, what's the benefit of doing that? All depends. Um, here I'm just calling just straight resistors, but in reality, 
you're not going to just hook up resistors just for resistors just sake. for the sake of doing it. Um, typically, it'll be a resistor that's performing a function. It'll be, you know, it could be a, a, a bulb. It could be something that's actually doing something. And you have to know the resistance of it. Um, the other option would be if you're doing a voltage, where you want to have a reduction from 12 volts down to something else. Then you'll use resistors to. So some needs seven volts and some needs five volts. You can start reducing it down that way. But we'll look at that a little bit. So. So here we come up with our total resistance in this circuit, 4.4 ohms. Again, working back Ohm's law. Current is voltage over resistance. So again, 12 volts over your 4.4, 2.7 amps. So your question about um, why you do it. Every time you have resistance, you're gonna have a voltage drop. So in this case here, So we know the circuit here is 1.2 amps. Just because you told us? Because in this case we know it's... Okay. And then uh, basically working it, you know, in resistor 1, we know it's, in this case it's 8 <coughs> ohms, which because we've been told that. Uh, so your 1.2 amps times your eight ohms, again, going back to Ohm's law that we are trying to find voltage. So 1.2 times eight is your 9.6. And we can get that resistance level based on the color coding of the exactly. resistor itself. Yep. Which I probably should have talked about is- We talked about it briefly, briefly before. Class. Yeah. I got a little cheat card that came with this little kit, but every resistor has color banding on it. And those colors have certain indications as far as adding them up, tells you how many ohms and what your multiplier is. So actually I'll hand that around to look at. So on that uh, strip there are 100 kilo ohm. start looking at the different color bands that add up. Yeah, we went over it last class. Yeah. We used to learn that. There's mnemonics to try and remember it. Everybody has a different thing. I just have a little card that I just throw in there. And I'm sure I should learn it a little bit better than that, but didn't learn in high school. I don't think I'm going to learn it that well now. So, um, so in this case here, let's say we know it's a 1.2 amp circuit. First resistor we've been told is eight ohms. So we know E voltage, current times resistance, 1.2 times eight gives us 9.6 volts. In the second resistor, we've been told it's a 12 ohm resistor. We still have 1.2 amps in the circuit, doesn't change. Working that out, now we've got 14.4 volts. So if we want to find out what the supplied voltage to this from the battery, we would add up the two voltage drops, 9.6 and the 4.4 gives us 24 volt battery. So as you're saying, if we had different pieces of equipment that needed it, in this case here, what you would more likely see would be there'd be your battery, the one resistor, and the other resistor coming back. So if we know across here, you have the 9.6 volts. The next one we know would be the 14.4 volt drop. So 
So that'd be where you'd pull off your different. So you're telling me the battery is 24 volts in this case? In this case here, this is, the total voltage is a sum of the voltage drops across it. So what's the power in between the two resistors? Power? Or what would be the voltage that would end up? Like if one, if one is 9.6, yep. but they connect anyway. They're connecting. So the voltage drop from here to here yeah. is 9.6 volts. But it means up. And then from here to here, you're losing another 14.4 volts. Oh, okay. So oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Alright. Sorry, guys. And tip and an example of that is <coughs> kind of hard to see, but I've taken a computer supply, hacked and bashed it. And from the different color wires, you have different voltages. So from one band I have 3.3 volts, another one I have five, another one I have 12. And the ground. And then the ground, so between these, and then you can actually combine them too. So that's a simple project that we get a little confidence in it and can start hacking bashing stuff. Good news is, with your license, once you get to that point, you get a little confidence, you can make receivers, you can make your dummy loads, you can make just about any piece of equipment that you see, except for transmitters. When you get your advanced, then you can do the transmitters, but anything except for that, you can try out. So basically it's just applying, you know, a little bit of information you learn and some electronics. So that's where you'll really start using the like power supplies are an easy one to start learning with because you can start you know taking voltage working on your what you need and that's where your amperage is really critical like as I said most of your mobile radios you'll make a power supply at home for are going to need minimum of 10 amps some will need possibly up to 18 20 amps depends on that wattage that's kicking out so read your specs and then you can start looking what you need for that. I'm at a break point. Did we want to take a quick break? Yeah, sure. Okay, coffee break, everybody. You go downstairs, have a coffee, use the cappuccino machine.